So, about me. I love cats a lot. Uh, those are all my cats, actually. Uh, I'm working in data since uh, 11 years. Uh, I started uh, in uh, consulting like a lot of uh, software engineers. Uh, and then I joined Le Bon Coin. We'll have a talk about them uh, later in the day. Uh, and that's where I uh, started to work with, uh, job, uh, with, uh, with PostgreSQL. Never stopped since. I might have been choosing my jobs depending of PostgreSQL or not. <laughs> So, uh, and yes, I told, tweet a lot about Postgres and uh, Steve Baltus, and I blog with a lot of friends, uh, software engineer too, at uh, Honest uh, Engineering. So about Algolia, uh, if you don't know about us, we're a SaaS company providing um, search as you type experience via an API. So it's pretty fast. We try to make it the more relevant as possible. Uh, by uh, personalizing the, re the result and uh, analyzing uh, result uh, all of all over the, the indices indices sorry uh, of the of our customers, and we try to focus our product on uh, maximizing the developer experience, make it the best possible and the easiest possible for a developer to integrate our tool. That's an example of uh, implementation we have on uh, mobile or, or on websites. We are more than 300 employees now, uh, present in uh, five, uh, five offices. Uh, and we, in the inside team, deal with uh, 200 billion API calls per month. So that's pretty huge. And to do that, we use Citus. So now, uh, yeah, as every company in Paris, we are, we are hiring a lot of software engineers. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> about the theory. First of all, um, as a materialized view is in between a view and a table, uh, I would like to uh, do a little reminder about uh, what, a table, what a view is. So a view is just a saved query, basically. Uh, in the PG catalog, we just save the queries. And each time a user querying the view, uh, it exec he, ex he or she executes the query on the, the source table. So it's basically a, a nice tool to save a, a complicated query with window function or distinct if we do that, uh, or, or complicated uh, join lateral. And the mad view, the difference between uh, the view and the mad view, is that the mad view saves the query and also the result. Both of them are saved in, a, in, a, in PostgreSQL. So in more detail, uh, yeah, they were added a long time ago in 2013, and still there are some evolution. Like in uh, 2000, in the 11 uh, version of Postgres, the, the the guys have added uh, concurrent creation of uh, materialized view. As I said, the results are persisted. PT or not, the updates are only on demand, so we have to execute a, a query about that. We we'll see that uh, after, and in the end. It seems like it behaves like a table. So after someone asked me why, I really dig in the why, and Dim told me to go check in the code. He helped me about that because I was a bit scared about, about uh, reading C code. <laughs> but yeah, it handles indices creation, uh, foreign key constraints. Uh, we have to vacuum them. And also, it supports joints. So, joint. so you can join a materialized view with uh, any table or other view. So in the code, it's yeah, pretty, pretty much like a table as it shares the same method. Uh, to create a table as a query, we use this command, create table as, and actually it's pretty much the same method for the materialized view. The only thing is that there is a flag is mad view that will generate more code. Uh, for example, in the PG catalog, we have a view or a table, I don't remember, uh, that presents those materialized view. And it just, if we specify that we want a mad view, it will be saved at the relation kind mad view. And also, if it's a mad view, uh, yeah, we have the result, but we also have the, um, the, the query which is saved. Concrete use case of usage of, uh, of materialized view, caching, because when you have a, a slow query, it can be super useful to cache the result. Uh, especially if you don't have a, a real-time constraint. Uh, you can also cache foreign data wrapper results in your uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, 
so it's pretty useful too. And you can let data engineer like me uh, mess up the source table via uh, Cowboy uh, deployment, and uh, the, user, the end user won't see consequences for a while. So the concrete use case I had and I faced, uh, I was working at a job teaser at the time, and every morning I have a support, uh, support people calling me uh, because the dashboard wasn't working. So at Job Teaser, we they provide um, a platform that helps students to find uh, internship or to find their first job. So schools are interested to know: Does students uh, apply to jobs? Do they find a job or an internship? And companies paying for Job Teaser wants to know if their job offer is attractive or not. So to do so, we provide did a number of views. So total of views. Uh, per job offer, the number of unique view, you imagine the distinct here, uh, and the number of clicks click on the um, apply button, so, so they can see the uh, return of investment of uh, using just job teaser. So at first, and why it, well, it wasn't working, we have just one table with two levels of aggregation, um, with the finest level, because we have the job offer ID, the school ID, uh, to filter and to detect if we are, uh, uh, if uh, the student is in a management school or university or stuff like that. And in the end, it was pretty slow. For in terms of user experience, uh, the user has to wait more than five minutes. And in the end, the browser was timeouting. So yeah, not pretty, not a great experience. Also, uh, another point. In the, data, uh, in the data ecosystem, we had the, all of those views in real time, but we provide them with a day late. It was a daily batch that we were computing at this time. And the dashboard, I, I've just showed the first part, but actually the, the down part of the dashboard uh, was in real time. So we, have, we had some discrepancy between the first graph and the rest of the dashboard. And really not nice. So, the query plan explaining all of those uh, uh, pain, painful stuff, yeah. We had more than 50, uh, now we have 50 million rows, I guess. And yet, all of those rows are sorted just to, in the end, uh, get just one, one detail for one job offer. So in the end, more than five minutes. So as data engineer, we had the idea of uh, making an aggregated table to pre-compute those data. So one aggregated table per school ID, so we don't have the maximum level of detail, and another one to compute uh, those, uh, all of those number of views. And we wanted to batch every two hours, because every two hours is much better than uh, be la being late for uh, two days. Um, we wanted also to apply a delete plus insert uh, strategy. Uh, I will explain it just after. So our uh, data model is pretty obvious. We have two tables in the end based on uh, the first one I showed before. And this first one was um, feed fed uh, in near real time. It's an external one, actually. Uh, and then every two hours, we just feed those aggregated tables with the data we wanted. And every two hours, we update by inserting a delete line inserting the newly viewed job offer. Actually, it didn't work in production. It was working pretty well in staging area as we don't have any users. Uh, <laughs> but when people are viewing your, your dashboard, they are acquiring access share locks, which is kind of normal. And when you want to delete a, a row which is accessed by wait, you just wait for the uh, you just wait to acquire, acquire the row exclusive lock. And in our case, we could wait for a while. So we stopped this idea. We killed those query at 2 a.m. at night. And we just uh, go back to the same strategy as before, which was batching every night. So just a pain. And now we try to implement materialized views. So we keep get the same schema just by replacing the aggregated table by materialized views. So as you can imagine, 
the create of the materialized view was pretty easy uh, because it just create table as. Huh? And then, just as a reminder that was before, with the materialized view, we were super happy, super, we got super excited, like too much excited, <laughs> because we again uh, tested in staging area, refreshed the map view in staging area, everything was automated, perfect. We deploy, and we just compute a refresh materialized view. Remember the access share lock? Obviously, something went wrong. And it's all in the doc. Actually, we should have read the doc carefully. That's it. <laughs> because the um, refresh uh, of the materialized view requires an access exclusive lock, which means no select on the table. So it's just like, OK, I refresh the table, and no one can access the table board. It's just like before, the, the front end animation running and running and nothing. So poor, ex poor user, user experience. And why? Just why is it working like that? I was wondering. Because it's all in the code again and super easy to read. Um, PostgreSQL, in, when refreshing a materialized view without the concurrent mode, I don't know if you see, if all of you are seeing that, but without uh, using the concurrent mode, uh, PostgreSQL wanted, wants an access exclusive lock. It's written. And also, to do that, uh, the engine is creating a new table and swapping the rel field nodes of the old table to point to the new one. Also, as it's a new file, uh, uh, the engine has to re-index, and re-index re uh, requires also an access exclusive lock. Just as an illustration, uh, so as, as in the code, uh, the engine builds a new materialized view, actually, and uh, re-executes the saved queries, query, uh, and in the end, just point on the older, on the, the previous one. So the access share lock is blocking this new pointing uh, on the on the new file, and also the re-index. As uh, I mentioned, PostgreSQL get us covered about that. We have the refresh concurrently. Magic. <laughs> um, so PostgreSQL um, allows to uh, the concurrently um, option allows to have concurrent select, which is great. Uh, the user can still continue to query the dashboard. Um, we just have a little constraint, which is to add um, a unique index on the materialized view. That's OK. We have the data model that allows us to, to do so. And as an, indices of, uh, as an indice of how it works, it can be either slower or faster than the refresh. Uh, so let's dig into how it works. So we can see in the code. Uh, we have two strategies of refreshing. And if concurrent, we do the refresh, refresh by match merge, which work by, well, by doing a full outer join against an old version of the, of the data producing a, diff, a diff result. Let me just illustrate that. Uh, actually, so as before, the refresh can concurrently execute the same query on a, another table. The engine uh, does a full outer join between the, this new table and the, the old one, and checking which one are change, have changes uh, to, to, to know which one to insert, which one to delete if needed, and then build the diff table, which is way smaller, uh, and con which contains the TID of, uh, of the previous row in the, in the old mad view, and the new row which can be empty if, uh, if no, no data has to be uh, compute. And after, after doing this diff, uh, PostgreSQL just insert, delete, and insert in the, new, in, the, in the old mat view. So this just requires an exclusive lock like we had before uh, with the aggregated table. So the user can still uh, access, access the table, uh, and we wait row per row to insert uh, the new data. And that's it, actually. So we wouldn't have broke our production if we just have read the documentation properly. Uh, and in doubt of something, just go check the code. It's super easy to read the code uh, of PostgreSQL. Thank you, Dimitri. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now I will do that. <laughs> so to wrap up uh, about all, uh, all of that, 
MatView can replace table if you don't have a real-time uh, real uh, constraint. Um, other RDBMS does it automatically, PostgreSQL don't, but at least we can do some bad stuff. <laughs> and you get to choose between two strategies of uh, refreshing, something we didn't check at this time, and which was existing, actu existing actually. It's pgcron to refresh the MatView. It's super easy to set up. It's just an extension that you install as an extension. And then you use the cron, uh, cron syntax uh, and uh, choose the, the, the query to execute. So to set, it's super easy. To unset is as easy. You just unschedule the task ID, and that's it. And I guess that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have questions? Hi, thanks for your talk. I was uh, wondering how uh, Matterless views we're doing uh, in presence of replication. If you have a replicated database, replicated materialized views, we had a lot of trouble with that, actually. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I'm no, I know the, the answer exactly, because for me, in PG, PG dump, for example, the data are not saved. It's just the query which is saved, so maybe in terms of re replication, the query uh, it was more problem with locking, and uh, you have the replicate that was locked during a vacuum or things like that. You don't have any elements about it, no? I didn't have this uh, this issue. You're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you refresh your materialized view every two hours. Uh, why? Why two hours? Why not uh, more often? We could actually. I don't know if uh, you've set it to less, um, but we actually it was like some sort of lack of confidence in ourselves. <laughs> so we were expecting maybe we refresh uh, during one hour or more, and we took that uh, security of two hours. Okay, and it was good enough for, uh, yeah, for it was the good customers. Enough. Yes. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm, I was wondering about the difference of performance between the concurrently mode and the normal one. You said that it could be faster or slower. True. Uh, it can be slower if the so, if the difference is very large, right? Yes, exactly. If we expect that the, every time we, we refresh the materialized view, uh, almost all the data have changed, it's probably not a good idea. It, it's it, your advice, or it depends of um, how much, how long you you are okay to wait. But yes, if the diff is large, uh, it's uh, the time of uh, deleting and inserting data. Uh, while uh, when uh, doing the refresh, it's just the, the time of the re-execution of the query and then the swap. Okay. So it can be effect, uh, uh, much longer. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Um, so you said you refresh the table read. Two hours, uh, basically. And uh, have you considered if a user comes one hour after the table has been refreshed, um, like uh, try to give them fresh information by just computing the, uh, the the aggregated value on the last hour from the the real tables, and then having it like union or whatever with the with the materials view. Have you tried that or? We haven't because actually it was good enough with two hours, uh, but we were we were thinking about it. Okay. But actually, I left after, so maybe they will. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Hi. I have a question about your updating your materialized views. It sounds to me like you're updating both of the views at the same time rather than staggering them. Uh, actually, we are updating them uh, in two processes. We have two queries uh, refreshing each of each one of them. So the first materialized view refreshes, and then the second materialized view refreshes. Have you had any customers say the data in the like they they access one that's just updated, and then they're accessing the other that hasn't updated yet, and they're saying, "Hey, these don't match." I have uh, explained it wrong. <laughs> Actually, both of them were uh, asked to refresh at the same time. At the same time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we didn't have the complaint. Great. Hi. Hi. Is there an incremental refresh mode? Uh, we can imagine. We can say that the the concurrently it's 
It's incremental, actually. Not really, because when you build your temporary table, yes. you have to fill it with a lot of data. And if you have, a, even if you have few change, you have to build your temporary table. Yeah. It can be very heavy. Yes, it can. But actually, for now, maybe before, maybe after, but for now, uh, I don't know about an incremental mode. But you can do it, I guess, by PLSQL, but your call. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you.